Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and you're watching Sculpt January day number 25 and the topic was healing so I've done a healing potion. It was an interesting one. Um, I tried some different techniques so I'll tell you about those. Uh, first of all I just modelled the basic shape of the um, vial. Yeah, healing vial, isn't it? And I tried a few different shapes uh, eventually. I, I've, the first one I went to was a sort of rounded uh, ball-like shape. And um, I thought that would look quite nice. I was happy with the shape, uh, but it didn't quite go with the intricate details that I wanted to have a go at uh, with this sculpting. And the sculpting method I'm using is the... Um, radial symmetry I'm trying to think what it was called it's the radial symmetry so in the symmetry tab under the sculpting tools you have a radial option and that's quite an interesting and fun thing to experiment with uh, which you'll see in a bit uh, so um, there's a fair bit of experimenting just uh, figuring out uh, what the shape was going to look like and lots of modeling um, I don't really want this to be about sort of box modeling like I'm doing here um, I'd rather it was about sculpting so um, it, it is a bit disappointing that I kept going back to sort of this modeling uh, stage and it took a fair bit of time to get that shape how I wanted it uh, which you can see me working on here and that's just a, a normal subdivision surface modifier on this shape uh, the cork going in I thought I'd sculpt the cork uh, so I've got two bits of sculpting I'm doing hence sculpt January I've got a it's got to be some sort of sculpting uh, so the cork and the sort of um, fiddly bits uh, <laughs> in a sense that are going around uh, the vial uh, you can see <coughs> excuse me uh, you can see that um, I, I changed the shape quite drastically there uh, from this humble beginnings uh, and I thought I'd start with a torus and try and do a sort of base plate for this um, vial to sit on uh, and so um, obviously uh, making a mistake there, not resetting my scale and going into Dyntopo and just experimenting and seeing what's going on. You can hopefully see me there with the symmetry uh, down below, uh, right next to me here, uh, the symmetry and then the radial option that's there. And it has to be in the Z axis for me anyway, what I'm doing here, uh, assuming that it, you're in the Z axis. And I thought it'd be quite interesting to do a sort of organic shape like this and I was going to try a bit of hard surface modeling on those as well. I'm not too disappointed with <clears throat> I'm not too disappointed about how this one turned out um, but it just wasn't the right style and I think it was mainly the shape of the vial that uh, it was too rounded and then it had these fine details at the bottom at the base didn't quite work out for me. Um, that was just a, an artistic feeling anyway. So you can see me using the uh, crease brush and the sort of flatten brush to uh, smooth these things out um, and I think there was a bit too bigger um, bits, <laughs> I don't know what you call them, uh, too uh, finer details and then they were too big uh, as well. It's, it's difficult to describe really uh, but it didn't feel right. Uh, and you'll know what I mean when some piece of artwork you just look at and think that's perfect and they've got the sort of detail to shape ratio. I remember someone talking about this and it's there's a 70-30 rule and you should do sort of 30% these are sort of minute details and 70% is sort of your general bulk of your painting it was uh, and it, I suppose this does go into that and it was too much in many ways this detail but also um, it was just not the right uh, marriage of shapes. Uh, so you've got the really rounded shapes of that vial uh, that was I was doing here. And then this sort of very fine shapes um, of this sort of, um, what, I don't know what these things are that go round these things, but uh, <laughs> I'm not really explaining myself very well. But hopefully you can get uh, the idea of what I mean. Uh, so this is my second attempt and, and I kept sort of saving it and calling this base 1, base 2 uh, and trying different things out. I saw a uh, good video uh, from uh, this uh, person that calls himself Master Zeon. Uh, in fact, I think I mentioned this this morning, yes I did. I mentioned that uh, in my previous sculpt uh, and he had some hard surface techniques and I thought, oh, do you know, that's something I'd never thought about doing, which was just putting your uh, pinch brush strength up to 
um, 1.5 rather than 0.5 which it naturally is on and it just it's like he called it super pinch or something uh, he has names for it and things uh, but uh, it was really really useful uh, for getting sort of hard surface uh, features uh, but it, it still wasn't working in any way <laughs> as you can see here but it was um, it, it was quite um, a, a new way of looking at things for me so it's quite nice when you see different things like that. So you can see I'm still experimenting with the shapes and I thought I'd leave all this in this sort of experimentation so you can see the sort of processes I go through uh, and in a way I'm kind of sketching uh, ideas on the models uh, and then saving it and going back to a version that I like. Same with the pose modes I tend to um, obviously do three poses and then choose one I like and the same thing here uh, is how I sort of decided to go about it anyway so I must be on my third one now I think uh, maybe even sort of fourth um, there's sort of different adaptations of different things uh, so again trying things out seeing what works uh, practicing with the, uh, the versions of the brushes that Master Xeon uh, has, has shown me uh, through his videos uh, and it, they, yeah, they're quite effective. You can see there uh, immediately that you've got quite a nice hard, rigid edge, and that's quite nice, isn't it? Uh, so, and I did experiment uh, just quickly uh, with a hard surface model doing a sort of sci fi motorbike thing, uh, and it was really incredibly quick and easy to make that sort of hard surface uh, model look. And uh, someone pointed out that we've got a topology rake option within the brushes now as well. Uh, which uh, shapes your topology to a certain direction and that gives you better um, hard surface ability. I think that's the thinking behind it anyway and you won't need so many polys for that area if you want sharp edges. So you can see I'm now settling on the fact that my vial is the wrong shape. I keep thinking that word's wrong, vial. It is right. Uh, it's uh, been a long day. <laughs> so. Uh, hopefully I'm saying the right thing and someone's going to say actually it's the, um, the veil or something like that and I'm going to look silly. Uh, but I've resigned myself to not doing any jump cuts and <laughs> looking things up in the middle of these uh, videos otherwise it would just take too long. Uh, you can see I'm taking a long time sorting out my uh, vial at this point as well and getting the right shape. Um, but that was also it was so important to get that shape right and get the look right um, before moving on. I always say that with the base of your sculpt, it should be uh, exactly how you want at the base and then you move to the details and don't move to them too early. Uh, so sort of remodeling the inside. Uh, you can see that the way I've done the inside is just to um, do the Alt S, so scale by the normal, so duplicate the, ins uh, the um, outside face, uh, scale it in with Alt S, so scale by the normals, and then link them together with um, bridge edge loops. Yeah, hopefully that makes sense to most people. I'm doing the same sort of thing here, duplicating this area, and then I'm applying a solidify modifier to that section. Uh, and then I've got this sort of outer shell. Uh, and that's quite a nice, easy way. And that's a good way of doing things like armor as well and stuff like that. You can just uh, select a load of faces, uh, duplicate them, pull them out, and uh, separate them, of course, with um, Control P. Control P? I think that's separate. My brain is going all over the place. Uh, but it's uh, separate by selection or loose parts if uh, that's the only loose part. Uh, so yes, uh, and then I add a solidify modifier to that. Um, hopefully you're still with me and this is making sense. Uh, anyway, uh, now I'm back onto my radio, uh, radial uh, symmetry. I should have left that up actually, that would have been handy. In the next episode of this, I will actually do it as a tutorial uh, because I've been sort of practicing this and it's ornament is the next one. I think it's the next one anyway. And I will just go through, uh, possibly in real time, maybe there'll be a bit of time lapse in there, but uh, I'll show you the tools in real time for this radial thing because it's quite straightforward, but it's really nice what you can work out of it and uh, you can get nice looking ornaments. Uh, so um, I'll do a very basic ornament, so it won't be a special sculpt, but uh, at least it will be a tutorial because uh, a couple of people have said about when am I going to start doing tutorials again. Uh, they don't understand me. I'm doing Sculpt January. It's, uh, it's what I want to do. I want to be a sculptor. <laughs> anyway, uh, so uh, I'm going to continue doing Sculpt January, but I will add in this uh, tutorial bit uh, tomorrow. Uh, all going well. I say tomorrow, but it's actually Saturday. I'm actually on Thursday, so it's, I'm doing sort of this recording in the evening and I'll upload it in the morning, uh, 
doesn't matter, <laughs> I am babbling there. So I'm doing these tiny details, and in the radial section, the sim ah, there is symmetry lock next to me now, uh, that way, uh, and you can see I've done it six times in the z-axis, uh, the radial, and uh, with that, um, I, I'd sort of changed it around. I did 32 at first to do those really close lines, and then uh, six to do the sort of uh, wider <laughs> lines. I think it's difficult to explain, really. Uh, and you can see I'm just sort of uh, going in stages up this um, up this bit. Now this is dreadful, isn't it? I don't, um, this commentary is awful. Uh, this bit and this bit, these bits and squiggly bits and blobs. Uh, they're all it's all happening on on this channel. Uh, aren't you aren't you glad you're watching? If you still are. Anyway, uh, back to my squiggles. I thought I'd go for some really uh, finite details, and I was just randomly putting squiggles in. Uh, it will lag. I've got a, quite a high detail. I went to relative detail uh, for a change because I just thought, well, I'm zoomed right in, uh, and I'm going to uh, stay zoomed in. I'm not sure. Did, do you know? I don't know why I did uh, <laughs> uh, um, relative detail, but it just seemed to make sense uh, for what I was doing. Uh, sometimes you just get a feel of these tools, and you think that that, that will work well with this one. Uh, so you can see me doing these uh, sort of different shapes and intricate details, and uh, when you zoom out, it looks alright. Zoomed in, it doesn't look great, but zoomed out, it looks alright. Um, I put a bit of depth of field on these smaller objects. If you put a bit of depth of field on, they look smaller. It's one of those uh, things uh, that cameras uh, do. Uh, so we see uh, depth of field, which is sort of things that are in focus and out of focus. Uh, we see that, uh, and if we if we, if we see a shallow depth of field, which is uh, some of the stuff being out of focus, we think it's in a small space. We're so used to seeing photos like that. Anyway, <laughs> onto my cork. Uh, so the stopper, as it might be called uh, for files, I don't know, but it's made out of cork. Uh, and uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, I did have a reference image, just quickly looked at a few of what cork looks like and I uh, did a few sort of holes and it crashed when I tried to do um, what's it, um, fl detail flood fill. <clears throat> I thought because it was a small shape and it wasn't that high resolution that it wouldn't crash, but it did. Disappointed. Uh, Blender 2.8 crashing on me. Um, it's interesting really. I, I do think I've got around the undo bug. It's because uh, it lags undoing. Uh, so don't press the undo button a couple of times, otherwise it will just sort of jump backwards loads. So just press undo, wait until it undoes. Uh, undoes? Undoes, whatever you call that. Okay, so there's my cork. I did think um, I would um, retopologize uh, just for a faster render. I was a bit concerned about EV and glass, and I was right in being concerned because uh, it's probably me and my inexperience with EV again, and I did try to uh, I, I got the um, the transparency to work with the alpha blend rather than opaque, which just doesn't work. So I don't know why it would be the default, um, but someone could probably tell me why. Uh, so changed that to opaque. Uh, did the uh, screen space refractions and things like that, and it just looked awful. Uh, I also tried the what do you call them? Uh, reflection planes. That's uh, it doesn't sound like the right word, uh, but um, you can sort of bake out reflection planes and things uh, to try and get that sort of thing to work as well and it just looked awful. I'm not sure whether it was a glitch actually uh, because at one, for one second it looked great and I thought oh excellent these are really good and then suddenly it stopped working so it might have been a glitch probably just me to be honest. Uh, so I'm retopologizing the uh, detailed section as I call it that sort of metal uh, thing that goes around the middle uh, so that because it was quite high resolution because I went to relative detail and quite uh, low detail level and which is high resolution on that version of the brush and uh, I thought I'd bake out the cavity and the normals and it crashed on me so I had to go back to 2.7 so I didn't show much of the baking process uh, because while it's a little bit boring uh, and you can see I've got some weird faces in there that I've added in by accident so I went around deleting those uh, that's the usefulness of unwrapping with seams. You can sort of see whether there's something obviously wrong. Whereas I'd usually do a smart UV project, uh, which is a bit rough, really. A bit of a hack, in a way. Anyway, so doing the cavity bake in a second, you'll see the crash. Uh, and that's when I go across to uh, 2.79 to do the baking. And that worked well. Uh, so um, 
it's a shame because 2.79, in fact, has it got ambient occlusion? I feel like it hasn't, uh, but maybe it has actually. And maybe I should do all my baking back in 2.79 for the time being, uh, because it just takes ages, the ambient occlusion bake in 2.8 for some strange reason. Uh, it might just be that that's how long it takes, but uh, it seems strange when the cavity uh, bake is quite quick. Um, and yeah, yeah, should all make sense. But anyway, I'm now doing the shading, so I've done the baking, uh, and I haven't shown that process because, like I said, it's a bit boring uh, waiting for things to bake. And you can see that I've, I left a bit of the issues in because I thought um, it would be interesting for people to see. And you can uh, tell me what I'm doing wrong, maybe, uh, more experienced EV users out there. Uh, so uh, what am I doing? Oh yeah, I'm doing the liquid in the si on the inside. I thought um, some uh, brilliant concept art I'd seen with the glowing liquid inside and I thought this is going to be right up Evie's street. But it's inside glass and uh, it didn't like it. It wasn't happy. So I tried an emission and I was going to get the... Because I know emissions don't really work in EV in the same way as they would in cycles. Uh, but you can get uh, one of the lighting probes and things that make them work, apparently, which I, I was thought I'd test out, but uh, I didn't really get that far because the glass just looked horrendous anyway. <laughs> so just went across the cycles instead. So you can see me setting up the lights and uh, trying to get some sort of um, glass looking uh, detail. Um, I forgot actually, you also need to uh, tick the screen space reflections in the material editor as well as in the EV renderer. So it's a bit weird in EV how you need to tick settings but you also need to go to your material and tick settings within there as well. Uh, same with the lights, you have to sort of uh, change the settings in the lights as well as the render, which is sort of fair enough. Anyway, uh, eventually the final result and it's in cycles, uh, I failed, the EV lovers, I failed you. Uh, and there it is. Anyway, back to the Discord server. Uh, really nice one there from Rufenstent, I think that's how you pronounce it. A really interesting one there as well. Uh, someone's got a Sketchfab. Sketchfab seems to work, but videos don't seem to work so well for me. They sort of jump me all over the Discord server. But interesting sculpts coming out here. Uh, because there's been some quite interesting topics as well, hasn't there? Uh, that's one of my favourites from Mr. M. Uh, a fat flex, flexi fat, <laughs> flexing muscle but very fat. And uh, my favourite there is well from uh, Roof and Stint. So well done to you guys. Uh, and yes, there we have it. So thanks for watching. Uh, sorry if this one was a bit rambly. Uh, next one will be a tutorial style, hopefully all going well. And uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.